Let's talk about REM sleep behavior disorder, or RBD. So this disease is characterized by loss of atonia during REM sleep. For this reason, it occurs more in the second half of sleep, because this is where more of the REM sleep occurs, and it's important to gather in a history when the events occur. So it occurs in about 1-2% to of the population, more in older adults, and it's most likely an underdiagnosed disease. It's most commonly caused by an alpha-synuclein pathology, such as Parkinson disease, multiple system atrophy, or dementia with Lewy bodies. The REM sleep behavior disorder can also be a preceding uh, symptom of some of these diseases. There are other associated diseases as well, including neurodegenerative diseases. Uh, it can also be a side effect of antidepressant medications, and this is important to exclude when taking a history. It's also associated with narcolepsy, specifically type 1 narcolepsy is more associated with it. Type 1 narcolepsy has the orexin deficiency. Also pontine lesions can cause the disease, or it can be idiopathic. So the disease has a gradual onset and usually takes years before it's diagnosed. The median age of diagnosis is in their 60s. The hallmark feature is that there are repeated episodes of motor activity or vocalization while dreaming during REM sleep. The symptoms that occur in over three quarters of patients, the most common symptoms are punching, kicking, falling out of bed, talking, or screaming. Patients may wake up briefly uh, confused during dreams, but they quickly reorient themselves. There are also uh, other features such as cognitive impairment that can occur, and there can be Parkinsonism, especially if it's associated with the Parkinsonian diseases. So you can look for postural instability, freezing of gait, or bradykinesia. If there is REM sleep behavior disorder in a Parkinson patient, it's also associated with more rapid cognitive impairment. You can also look for anosmia, constipation, and orthostatic hypotension, which are also features that are common in Parkinson disease. So in terms of diagnosis, video polysomnography is required. This will both diagnose the, the disease and rule out mimics. So the hallmark feature is that there's increased motor tone during REM sleep in the chin or limb EMG leads. There's also an absence of epileptic activity. Uh, you have to make sure that the disease is not better explained by something else such as medications, such as antidepressants, uh, or substance use or other medical or neurologic disorders. So the treatment, so one, you have to avoid antidepressants. This will include SSRIs, SNRIs, and tricyclics. Uh, treat any comorbid sleep disorders like obstructive sleep apnea. Sometimes obstructive sleep apnea, you can have awakenings at night that are sort of similar and mimic the disease. And if you treat that, then the symptoms can go away. Um, some patients, especially if they're falling out of bed, they'll need to modify their sleep environment, such as adding padded bed rails, lowering the bed, and some people will even have a bed alarm. Uh, the medications can be tried as well, but the efficacy is not great. So higher doses of melatonin from 6 to 18 milligrams at night or clonazepam, uh, half a milligram to one milligram at night. Uh, it's better to start off with melatonin, especially in older adults, as clonazepam is not great when mixed with cognitive impairment. If those medications fail, you can also try cholinesterase inhibitors such as rivastigmine or denepazil. In terms of prognosis, these patients will need to be followed up because about 6% of them per year develop a neurodegenerative disorder, 
and especially for something like Parkinson, medication can be offered. And medication treatment for REM sleep behavior disorder may need to be lifelong.